Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tuesday the 28th of December 2021 is the Feast of the Holy Innocents, Martyrs, during Christmas week. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for my sake to redeem me from the slavery to sin and death. Help me to carry my cross with joy that I may willingly do your will and not shrink back out of fear or cowardice when trouble besets me. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture But first, more regarding the Feast of the Holy Innocents. St. Matthew tells us that when King Herod heard of the Magi that a new king of the Jews had been born, he was greatly troubled. Matthew 2, 3 When the Magi, warned in a dream, failed to return and give him precise information about the child, Herod had all male children under the age of two brutally slaughtered in and around Bethlehem. The sacrifice of the Holy Innocents testifies to Christ's utter poverty as he descends to our pitiful state, a state of murder and mayhem. The canonization of the Holy Innocents testifies to God's timeless mercy. As Augustine says, they are the floors of martyrdom, the first buds of martyrdom. The blood of his Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses us from all sin. A reading from the first letter of St. John chapter 1 verse 5 Beloved, this is the message that we have heard from Jesus Christ and proclaimed to you. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we continue to walk in darkness, we lie and do not act in truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we acknowledge our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from every wrongdoing. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 124 Responsorial Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Had not the Lord been with us when men rose up against us? Then would they have swallowed us alive when their fury was inflamed against us? Then would the waters have overwhelmed us, the torrent would have swept over us. Over us then would have swept the raging waters. Broken was the snare, and we were freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our soul has been rescued like a bird from the fowler's snare. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. 
the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. He ordered the massacre of all boys in Bethlehem. He reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, verse 13. When the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled, since they were no more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled The Tragedy and the Glory of the Holy Innocents. Joseph woke Mary and the child, took their few possessions, and went out into the darkness of the night towards Egypt. As he traveled, Joseph must have thought about how his life had changed since Nazareth. For years he had lived a quiet life of work and worship. Then Mary came along, Mary the promised woman, and his life began to be lifted up to the heights and cast down to the depths. And now this choice, yes, he would obey the angel. He would take no chances. It didn't matter that he went into a strange country. He would not question God's plan. He had learned in Bethlehem that God would provide for them. His only obligation was to follow his will. God would take care of the details. It is certain that his faith was stronger every time he looked upon the mother and her child. The Holy Family were the first innocents to suffer for the sake of the kingdom, but there were more. Secret thoughts began to reveal themselves as Simeon had foretold. As the Holy Family fled into Egypt, Herod sent his soldiers to Bethlehem and its surrounding district and ordered them to kill every child two years and under. What a terrifying event! Babes at the breasts and in cradles were all suddenly snatched away from loving arms and brutally murdered. We can look back and realize how privileged they were. They died that he might live, so that he in turn could die that all mankind might live. But the parents of those children did not see the future or purpose of this tragedy. Perhaps there is a lesson for all of us in this incident. We must trust his wisdom and providence in all the heartaches and tragedies of life, even though we may see their purpose and benefit only in eternity. The parents of these children must have received tremendous graces from the Father as their children became the new kingdom's first martyrs. Yes, God would bring good out of evil. One thing is certain, this massacre brought the coming of the Messiah to the attention of the entire populace. Herod's pride made him think he had destroyed the Messiah, and so again, the deceiver was deceived. This meditation was written by Mother Angelica of the Annunciation, who died in 2016 and was a poor Claire nun and founder of the Eternal Word Television Network.
Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Scriptural Readings Introductory Prayer Father, I come into your holy presence this day aware that you guide my life with love. I believe that nothing happens to me unless you will it. I renew my faith in your promise of heaven where every tear will be wiped away. Thank you for getting involved in our cruel world in order to heal it with your love. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenging opportunities, helping advance God's kingdom on earth. Lord, may my presence today be a help to those in need. Our first challenge, angels. We want to cry with these women who have had their children stolen from them in the most defenseless time of their lives. Human cruelty reaches so deep that it desires to maintain power by snuffing out the lives of others. Yet these children silently remind us of another reality. They remind us that there is a place where tyranny does not reign. There is a king who rules by love and whose kingdom cannot be defeated by cruelty. These children are messengers of that kingdom. They have been called to give a brief but powerful witness of the fight that this king will wage for love. They have gone ahead of him and their mothers will find them and hold them forever one day in the presence of their king. Our second challenge, Prophets, Thy Kingdom Come. This is the cry of these children. One day this new king will reign, but it will happen through a terrible fight with death and cruelty. These children are powerful prophets of the struggle of this king. They are prophets of the drama of human history where everything is at stake. Their cries are powerful prayers that will be heard by the Father and their cries begin to stir in that special child the desire to give his life as a ransom for souls. He will reign by pouring out his life as a gift for these children and for many souls. Our third challenge children. The church has declared these children martyrs. The first saints of Christ are infants. Infants speak to us at Christmas and their witness does not go unnoticed. These children inspire the church and pray for her. A child speaks to us of goodness and innocence. A child reminds us of the attitude we should have before God. Christ always lives with the heart of a child, a heart that trusts completely in his Father. He shows special predilection for children. He knows that often they are his most powerful apostles, inviting others to God's house by the simplicity and intimacy of their love for him. How many parents have been converted or discovered a deeper relationship with Christ through the example of their children. Our Conversation with Christ Jesus, it saddens me so much to see how these children were taken from their mothers and killed. It tears my heart apart to see how today so many children are never given the chance to know their mother's love because of the evil of abortion. I want to be a consolation to your heart, Lord. I want to give the very best of myself to you today in order to offer you some of the love that these children wanted to give. Let my life be a witness of unselfish love. Let me be like you. Our Resolution 
I will find some way of encouraging a mother of a young child. Further reflection entitled Entitled Conformed to Christ Quote Herod ordered the massacre of all the boys two years old and under in Bethlehem. Unquote. Matthew 2.16 Further reflection entitled Conformed to Christ Quote, Herod ordered the massacre of all the boys two years old and under in Bethlehem. Unquote. Matthew 2.16 Each baby boy killed that morning over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem died because he was mistaken for Christ. Matthew 2.13 The soldiers who killed the holy innocents in Bethlehem thought they were killing Christ or someone who could be Jesus. To the killers the children were indistinguishable from Christ. The child martyrs we call the holy innocents are thus a model for us. We are to bear the light of Christ in our lives to such an extent that Jesus could call us the light of the world. Matthew 5.14 Our lives are to be so conformed to Jesus that the world, in a sense, might confuse us for Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.1 this makes us a threat to the world as was Jesus, and so we risk being persecuted. Catechism of the Catholic Church 530 Yet, blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of slander against you because of Jesus. Matthew 5.11 I beg you through the mercy of God to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you may be judged what is God's will, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Romans 12.1 Our prayer, Father, mold and fashion me into the image of Christ. God's promise to us, broken was the snare and we were freed. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 124.7 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ Receive my vows, O Lord my God, and my desires of infinite praise and boundless blessing, which, according to the multitude of thy unspeakable greatness, are most justly due to thee. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.